your wife giving you a laxative? Yes. Rebus on the box. What are you saying? No, no, no. All right. Don't you know what? No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're going to save this. Don't put anything in your body unless you know what it is. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> Give me my 30 seconds. <laughs> if, if, you put prepar- if you put preparation H on your toothbrush instead of toothpaste, that's your fault. You know what? I'm just going to get right into this. Welcome to Dads with Nerdy Ambitions, your go-to podcast for nerd culture, pop culture in the 21st century. I'm your host, Steve Pugh, and that guy that's giggling in the background over there is the monster that I occasionally call my co-host, David Perry. Uh, Just to give you a little heads up on why he's laughing, we're kind of talking about uh, my Facebook post. And, and I'm going to defend myself here. All right. I'm going to def- I'm going to give the whole story because I couldn't put the full explanation into this. Um, so <laughs> shut up. All right. I, my wife. And, and, and so here's the question, whether or not I'm at fault. I, I know I'm partially at fault or if my wife is a monster, I think I posted on Facebook. I said, am I legally allowed to murder my wife at this point? Uh, but she laughed and I told her I was going to put this on the podcast too. So she, she encouraged it by the way. Uh, she goes, uh, so I, I, I've been working late because as a mailman, it's the holidays and it's, I'm going in at like, you know, waking up at like four in the morning, four thirty, and ending work. I'm doing, doing like, 12 13 hour days every day and and, and we the public we the public yes. appreciate all the hard work that you do <laughs> because the the united states postal service funds itself there's no tax dollars that go that's through true. it that's, that's true. number one and the postal service was one of the original cabinet departments that was created uh uh under the under the constitution and it's designed it is it is a service it is not supposed to be profitable so to that's speak true and it the design of it is that anyone in the united states can can send and receive mail at an affordable rate. That's true. That is all true. Thank you very much for <laughs> saying that. So but, I've been because there are a lot of people who hate the post office. Oh, I know, they think and it I get it run all the like time. a business, which it is run yeah. like a business. It is run like a business, <laughs> and it's less expensive and it's more efficient than FedEx and UPS. That's just true. And DHL. Uh, so thank you again for all the work that you do, especially <laughs> around this time of year. Yes. To bring me all of the crap that we buy off the internet to my this door. Is true. <laughs> so. It, needless to say, I have been extremely exhausted and I've been drinking probably more coffee than I should. And I had absolute horrible heartburn. Um, and I asked the wife, I said, Jackie, you know, hey, uh, do we have any Pepto-Bismol? And she goes, no, but we have uh, a generic version in the, you know, in our cabinet. She, and I'm like, where's that? And she goes, it's the only blue bottle in the back. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I go and grab it and I see it's got this larger cup and I'm like, all right, that's weird. And just, so I fill it like halfway 30 mils and, you know, chug it. And I'm like, wow, that tastes weird. This doesn't taste like even generic. It didn't have that like chalky taste. And so, so it, I look it didn't at it. look like you were expecting. No, <laughs> well, no, it, it didn't taste like, like you were expecting. Just, shut up. <laughs> Let me get through my story. <laughs> Let me get through my story. Good sir. And so I turn it to its side <laughs> And I look and it says super laxative. I'm so exhausted. It doesn't click in my head. I am. I am exhausted. And it goes, I'm like, that's a weird way to spell heartburn medication. And I'm like, oh my God. And I turn it and it says Philips milk of magnesia. Now, before people start getting in like technically milk of magnesia is an anti-acid. Yes, it is. It is an anti-acid. It absolutely is. However, I didn't know that. And the wife didn't know that either at the time. And the, the, the amount you're supposed to take is five mils. And so you took 30. I took 30. Okay. So I went to, I looked at her and I said, Jackie, that is a laxative. And she just looks at me and goes, oops. And <laughs> so the rest of the night, I'm fearing for my life because I got home and it was, I took it around like seven o'clock. It takes about three hours to kick in. Well, two hours to kick in. And then you know, brace for impact, you know, then we get to play my favorite game. Don't trust a fart. So, <laughs> so you lost five pounds, right? I, I, I was, I was actually safe. Uh, apparently I 
drink enough coffee in my life and I take an, I have an, I have enough fiber in my diet that okay. this didn't affect my body at all except it gave me like just ungodly cramps in my stomach. Okay. Um but I and I posted it on Facebook and of course everybody laughs which is fine which is what I wanted. I want people to laugh at my pain. But they also came to my wife's defense as in Steve you should have read the bottle. Yes. I'm tired. Screw <laughs> Who are you? Uh, what happened to that? Thank you for your service crap right there. Uh, I was exhausted. She said it was the it's the only blue bottle in the in the, the, the cabinet. And so she so she didn't pour something for you. And no, she it. didn't pour something okay. for me. She no, told she didn't you put where it to go. My throat. And oh you my went God. to the medicine cabinet. I trusted my wife. This moral of the story. Don't trust your wife. Tr- <laughs> no, no, no. You should trust your wife. Trust <laughs> but verify <laughs> trust but verify That's especially what when all you have to do is turn the bottle 90 degrees to the right to read uh, you're right what's in the you, box and you're right you're absolutely right i should have i i know <laughs> i should have but i just like uh, uh you know reveling in your misery <laughs> oh uh, my god please laugh at my pain because <laughs> we both looked at each other and i'm laughing as i tell it like i know it's going to be a bad day. It's like, you know, when you get like super spicy wings, you know, what's coming afterwards, you know, it's going to burn. I do not because I do not eat super spicy wings. I can't really anymore because I don't have a gallbladder. And apparently that actually right. helps inhibit. Like I, okay. it is what it is, but Oops. it's, see, I, I'm one of, I'm one of 10 Vietnamese people in the world that doesn't like spicy food. So yeah, that is, is we have a club. Is, <laughs> you guys get together. <laughs> <laughs> love it um so yeah we eat oatmeal together and that's is it. That what you do the most blandest plainest thing you don't even put any sugar or nothing it's just straight up oatmeal oh, oh, oh you gotta have brown sugar and milk with oatmeal oh my god you totally do i love i actually like putting a little vanilla uh but this is not a food podcast okay. this is a I nerd podcast um however i am gonna ask how was your thanksgiving it was nice we yeah. th- we, we didn't have thanksgiving at our house uh, uh uh we went to my wife's cousins and and everybody in our bubble is fully vaxxed and is getting boosters. And, nice. and my, uh, my, my two stepkids came in and, uh, and we had a real good time. It nice. was, it was nice and quiet. And then, you know, I, I always like to work the day after Thanksgiving. I have enough seniority. I could take it off, but mm. I like working because there's no one there yeah. and there's no conference calls. There's no training. There's no meetings. I can sit at my desk. My boss is usually off and the supervisor who's on doesn't really care what I do as long as I'm quiet and stay out of the way. So <laughs> as long as you're not causing drama. Hey, a, a good day is when no one at my work finds out I exist. Uh, that's a perfect day. Keep your head down and your mouth shut. Yeah. I, and I'm seeing you got your Tiamat over there. Your little got Funko my Funko Pop. Tiamat. That's right. Yeah, I got mine. Uh, he's in his box. I, I don't know if I want to remove him from his box. I'm weird like that because I had like no intentions of ever getting rid of it. But I've also got that weird little bit of like a collector, like irk. Oh, no, I'm, a, I'm a flagrant opener. Are I, you? I, I, yes. Oh, yes. Everything I have is open. I, I, uh, I want to, but I just like, I don't know. It's that it's it's a sealed in box thing. It's is just, it? Are it's, you an investor? Like, I don't know. Did you buy it as an investment? Probably not. Then open it. I will. I, I, I just it also keep... comes it also comes with the d20 and i've been using the d20 in one of my games and nice. it's, it's it's been pretty good to me i've got the xanthar one as well okay. so i i want to get the, i want to get the whole set uh actually my son knows a lot about some of the characters apparently there's one with a uh um uh his familiar is a gerbil or a hamster or something that's Minsk, the Minsk, yes. the ranger yes from Baldur's he, Gate. he knows a, all about him he's a and... shrunken space hamster Minsk and Boo. Yes. Minsk and Boo. Yes. Minsk and Boo. He knows them all about it. So I got to find him that one. Um, okay. I, I love Mind Flayers. I like my, I like my old, like, I, I don't know if I want to call them old school, but my OG uh, monsters. The, I like, I like slimes. I love right. beholders. I love mimics and I love Mind Flayers. Um, but I'm going to have to pick them up. There is a, a book that was released by the DMs Guild. Mm. uh wizards releases a surprise 156 page minsk and boo source book oh no way yeah it's um let's see what is it minsk and boo's journal of villainy minsk and boo's journal yes. of villainy all right i'm gonna have to look, get that for him did, did you ever play baldur's gate 2 baldur's gate, I, did. Yes. I did yes okay minsk minsk and boo minsk was a character in the first baldur's gate uh, video game 
What? The, the old isolinear three. Yeah, 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 yeah. I used to love that one. He was a he was a, a paired character with a wizard uh named ja, uh, Jahira. Mm. And so they were always as a pair, and he was a ranger and he could dual wield and all this other stuff. But Boo took up one of his his slots. And then in Baldur's Gate 2, Jahira was killed. Oh, spoiler alert for a 25 <laughs> year old video game. I was going to say, how old is it? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's at least 20 years. Uh, and, and, you know, Minsk has, you know, go for the eyes, boo, go for the eyes. And it's, it's it, he's awesome. He's, nice. he's, he's the best character in the game. He's the funniest character in the game. So, okay. but you, Minsk and Boo's vil, Journal of Villainy, uh, because uh, Baldur's Gate 3 mm. is coming out. And yes. Baldur's Gate three, I, I, have you played it? Uh, I, I so here's my I played a little bit. I have it. Okay. Um, I it, because it's they're they're constantly coming out with new things. Yes. I don't want to play too much because I want to actually enjoy the full game. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So I've played two. I I, I bought it early access. It's an early mm -hmm. access title right now, mm -hmm. and you have to pay the full sixty dollar triple A price or whatever it is. Yes. But, but like you, you said, they're, they're, they're constantly uh, uh, updating it. There's there's always a hot fix. There's always a new patch. They've been adding content. They added uh, the Druid class yep, they... uh, at, at some point. And it's using the fifth edition rule set. And supposedly it's going to tie in, even though it takes place 100 years or 150 years after um, after Baldur's Gate 2, after Throne of Ball ends, yeah. supposedly it's going to tie in with Baldur's Gate 2 on some level. Because some of the, I mean, the elf characters are still alive, right? Yeah. So the, the elves are the half elves and, and some of the other characters are, are still around and, and they're supposedly going to pop up uh, in the game. So, yeah. uh, but Minsk and Boo, are, are they, there's a book out. It's, it's available to the DMs Guild. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm not receiving a kickback, by the way. I'm just, you know, letting you know. I haven't bought it yet. <laughs> I'd kind of like to. Wizards sponsor us. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, Dinah Hare. Dinah Hare was the, was the Minsk's, Minsk's uh, witch. Jahira mm -hmm. was another character that she was with Khalid. She's a druid. Yeah. Anyway, you, so. Sorry, can you hear me? Just, I want to check real quick. Yeah. Okay, go, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I absolutely love the idea of it. I played it a little bit. I love the graphics. I love, mm -hmm. it is the closest I think I've ever seen to a game go from D&D, &D, like as close as you can get to actually playing an RP or actual game mm -hmm. of DD, &D. you know what i'm saying here um did you play never winter nights back again another 15 year old video game i have it i didn't really get into it there's a new one that just that they came out with last year um uh, that is a D D esque game it is it's based in the i think icewind dale area uh okay. but, and your choices are it's, it's it's essentially it's the new version of Baldur's Gate without being Baldur, you know the not the Baldur's Gate where it's the one and two, but like the uh, down looking version that they came out with for the ex the consoles a while back. Well, there there was a game using the same engine called Icewind Dale, and there was an Icewind Dale two. Mm. It used the old Infinity engine uh, that Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate two and Planescape Torment used uh, as well. Yeah. Um, that's an older game. But yeah. the uh, DDO, Dungeons and Dragons Online, I think uses fourth edition rules. But Neverwinter Nights was a game that came out, I want to say 2003 ish. And it was built around the third edition rule set. Yeah. And it was, it was a pretty good game, too. Yeah. Um, I'm not against it. I, 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 it's, I, I have a problem with MMOs, they grind too much for me. And I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's not even just that one it's like wow is was a struggle for me um mm -hmm. uh there there was uh there was a few others that were rift okay. uh, the, even they had a it never it never really made it out of beta maybe it did technically but there was a uh, warhammer 40k one and it was okay. just bloody horrible um right i i just it, mmos are it's not my cup of tea i try sure. i really truly try um however you know it is what it is right. um, well, you have to really enjoy either the grind yeah or the end game yeah or the community yeah you, and it look because like i play lord of the rings online or not as much as i used to but the thing about lord of the rings online is it's a good community it's one hmm. of the best you know there even there, know there was a lord of the rings one. Oh yeah I, i'm sure I, I mean that. it makes sense i mean there's a, there's one for everybody um 
but that's that's a game that you don't really play for the end game like you would for say wow or some of the others mm -hmm. but uh but it, the community is the best um in that game like, uh, you know you pay a uh, swotar i don't know if you played star wars the old republic i did um, i i so i didn't get into it till all right so i played the star wars online after uh -huh. you could already be a jedi galaxies uh, yeah i never and i think i picked a musician for that one right <laughs> somehow i still went jedi um uh, and then well, yeah because why play star wars game if you can't be a jedi this is true um and then i never played swodor i, I that... almost i tried to, i was going to get into it but i guess uh, so, i can't remember i think somebody like turned me off from it and then right. elder scrolls online is the only other one i've really played or okay. fallout ones the bethesda ones and i like the elder scrolls but okay it's eh, not my thing yeah um, so what do you do for thanksgiving uh i so my my uh wife's uh her, her stepmother and her her dad uh they they have a very italian style thanksgiving okay so there's lasagna there's raviolis and okay. stuff like that um uh, so i went to their house and it did that and it was nice it was really good uh i got to make my sweet potato casserole or my wife did she made it um however I'm going to be making mead uh, this week, actually. Okay, well, that sounds uh, fun. And I picked up a bunch of D and D stuff uh, for because Monsters and Mailmen is going fun. And right, actually, this weekend I'm going to be running a game for the uh, Cub Scouts. Okay. So I'm I I am the honorary I think dungeon master in the okay. area. So uh, so so when you're yeah. making mead. Yes. How long does that take? How long does it have to ferment? I mean, are Not you talking is, is this days it, or weeks or how long does that weeks, go? Weeks. Four to six weeks, I think is what they say. Okay. Um, so it it requires about three to four pounds of honey. Okay. You have to boil it and everything with water. It's it's right. literally just three, three ingredients to make meat. Uh, honey, water, and yeast. And that's it. Okay. Um, you can add more fruit and then it be, doesn't become meat. It becomes something else, but it's all honey-based wine. Um okay have you done this before no i've done beer okay. i've done beer okay um but i, I wanted to we, we drink mead at sure. the the D, D games and so i was like you know what i want to make my own it can't be that hard and so i'm going to experiment with it famous last um, words but <laughs> well i'm going to give it to the like the eldest of our group and let him try it first and if he survives then okay. you know i know it's good you know Maybe I'll give it to the wife after the laxative. <laughs> let her try it first. Like, hey, you know, if she lives, we're good. So, <laughs> no. Um, but so let's let's go ahead and uh, let's get into our subject of the night, good sir. Uh, we okay. are here to talk about. And now I was I was thinking about this, and I, I guess we should probably give this as a, a spoiler because we we're, we're going to go a little bit into the actual movie we're here to talk about ghostbusters specifically i think uh, afterlife uh-huh and uh so here is a your forewarning there may be some spoilers in this um yeah there will be yeah there's definitely gonna be spoilers so i will give you this chance to pause and skittle off after you've seen the movie all right that's enough time uh so uh ghostbusters afterlife good sir what were your thoughts on it? Uh, I, I liked it. I mean, I I do Ghostbusters cosplay, and um, I again, I was I, I was alive to see the first Ghostbusters in theaters. Uh, <laughs> and we start it, there first before sure. we get into the movie. Let's start about like what like okay for and I was gonna say like who hasn't seen Ghostbusters, right. but my wife didn't see Ghostbusters until mm -hmm. last year. Okay. So she hadn't seen Ghostbusters until right. like I actually sat down and watched it with her. Right. So there there are people out there. Um and yes, you the first one came out what 1984 was the Something first like customer. Yes. Yeah, uh yeah, it's gotta be. And it was directed by uh Ivan Reitman. Uh and it had Bill Murray, you had Dan Aykroyd, you had Ernie Hudson, you had Sigourney right. Weaver, Annie Potts uh oh my gosh who am i forgetting uh rick moranis yeah rick moranis i knew i was forgetting somebody you had a you had a uh and one more person uh egon uh, bu, 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 bu. ramus harold ramus yes harold ramus uh you had a solid cast yes and absolutely phenomenal movie uh 
which is it, it yeah, okay so i i want to say it, it it did something that a lot of people hadn't done it, it was a ghost hunting movie it took place I, I you know what i'll let you go with this this is this was your time in golden age and this is something you're passionate about uh so tell us tell the audience about uh ghostbuster and the fascination behind it well i i, I don't you know it was one of those movies that you know, when it came out, I think a lot of people didn't quite know what it wanted to be. Okay. I mean, was it was it a comedy movie? Was it a horror movie? Um, so, you it's, know, it's and- funny you should say that. Sorry, I didn't don't, totally don't want to interrupt you there. But it's I, I had actually talked to somebody about this. And I remember this as a kid. It was really scary it, to an extent. It was scary yeah. as a kid. But as an adult, it was really funny. Like there was right. It, both it, parts. Was, it was kind of like. Another movie that count kind of around the same time, Big Trouble in Little China by John Carpenter yes. uh, with Kurt Russell and, uh, uh, you know, just about every Asian actor that you could get in in uh, in the 80s uh, oh, that that, that also guy? didn't know if it was going to be if it wanted to be a horror movie or a comedy or anything like that. Um, you know, I think a lot of it was science fiction. Mm. Um but it was also accessible because it wasn't set off in space. Uh, it and if you know Dan Aykroyd is is the creator and he was the writer and he is just this prolific storyteller, hmm. you know. And he had written this giant treatment and the movie that they made was much different than the one that he and the script he initially wrote. Really? Uh, yeah, because they couldn't make it. Ghostbusters originally started out as it was a franchise and they, people were fighting ghosts, you know, all around the world. And it happened to be this, the New York franchise that, that the, this particular, uh, uh, the movie was about. Um, and he did the same thing with the blues brothers. When he wrote the blues brothers, they had, he had all this backstory about Jake and Elwood and all that other stuff leading into the blues brothers, which a lot of it's never made on screen. And he did the same thing with, um, with ghostbusters. And so the movie they made, I mean, at the time it was moderately successful, uh, where it really became successful was on home video and on the cable rounds, you know, because there was a time when, you know, you turned on, whether it was TBS or HBR or whatever, and Ghostbusters and one of the police academy movies was on (laughs) all the time, right? Yeah. Um, And it's one of those things, there are some things in the, in the first Ghostbusters movie that, that when you look back, don't hold up very well um like the, the 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 in the montage where they're fighting all the ghosts and there's the scene where the ghost is above ray in the bed and it you know it's you know, <laughs> i was gonna say the, the the right that's that's kind of scene <laughs> yeah and then there's also the when venkman goes on the date with uh dana barrett and he uh. goes to pick her up and, and she's possessed by zool uh venkman just happens to have enough sedative to you know knock out a horse and that's kind of creepy and kind of rapey yeah now again in in 1984 that's that's something that you can get away with which wouldn't fly today Mm. right but anyway so the so the movie goes on and and you know it was one of those we we watched it all the time my brother and i we because we have vhs that's it was rated pg so you know our parents would let us watch it uh, that and The Last Starfighter, those are the two movies I remember watching just over and over and over on VHS in the 80s. Um, you know, Ghostbusters 2 came out in 89. I don't remember being that into Ghostbusters 2. I can probably count the number of times I've seen that on one hand. Uh, I didn't realize it wasn't as popular. I, I, it's, I, I, again, I, I saw them when I was younger and I, and I watch them now and I'm like, all right, it's still good. But yeah, it's it didn't it never clicked them to me that ghostbusters 2 was not nearly as popular right i, I don't think it was I, I didn't like it as much um you know and then and then from 1989 until the 2016 ghostbusters there's just this drought now there are video games there are comics there's all sorts of other intellectual there's the 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 real ghostbusters cartoon that's on yep. tv in the in the 90s in the 80s yeah. and 90s and so there is content out there, and a lot of people just kind of latched onto it. You know, there, there are Ghostbusters chapters, you know, all over, you know, all over the world. You know, I'm, I follow half of them on Facebook. It seems like, <laughs> um, you know, and and it's it's an, 
I think people like it because it's an easy costume to do. I mean, you can make a Ghostbusters before the pack. You can make a Ghostbusters costume for under a hundred bucks. Um, and that's always nice. Uh, you know, and then now with 3D printing, people can print a pack for, you know, if you have your own printer, you can print it for, you know, a couple hundred dollars, if that, plus electronics and all that. So, so there's this, there's a big fan base out there and it endures, um, it's despite Despite the shortcomings of some of the some of the franchise's shortcomings, there's a lot of things to like, and the the Ghostbusters community, which admittedly has its own toxic faction, uh, a lot of them use Ghostbusters as an avenue for to do good things and to do charity work, uh, like some of the other costume clubs out there do. For me, it was it was always very nostalgic. I mean, you can think That's of fair. the Ecto one. And you know it's siren sound that it makes. Right. You know what that logo is. Right. And at Halloween, I, I I legitimately can't imagine any party not playing the Ghostbusters theme song. Oh, yeah. Like sure. it is, it's almost it's it is the Ghostbusters theme song is and Thriller are the equivalent for Halloween. What uh, Mariah Carey and Wham are for Christmas. Sure, sure. Uh, yes, yes. You know, there, there, there are that's on the that's on the mixtape. Yeah. When it when it comes, you know, the the, the monster mash is there, uh, the time warp, you know, oh it, God. It, and that yes, the Ghostbusters theme is, is on that mixtape. Um, but you're right, there there is a certain amount of nostalgia to it. Uh Slimer. Because it's it's I think it's something people have just grown up on. I mean, even even kids no ghostbusters you know and the and the sound of the proton pack starting up is is iconic uh yes. it's it's recognizable yeah um yeah there's you know, and, and about that. you know like like uh like the blues brothers the ghostbusters movie is very quotable it's there are a lot of things that you can apply to you know just walking down the street you know something happens you could you can throw a line out from the movie and you know, if somebody asks if you're a god, you say yes. You know, <laughs> just stuff like that is is it, you know it's it is it is a a good movie uh, that's also enjoyable. You can if it's on TV, a lot of people the remote stops. Yeah, no, it's 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 enjoyable. Um, and then from there, you had I know there is, and I, I I think we should just go into it. It's just like the 2016 Ghostbuster um a lo- there is a lot of toxic hate and then there's mm-hmm. just like dislike for it like i will be honest i was not a fan of it but my reasons for not being a fan of the 2016 were not what a lot of the negativity that they got like i didn't like it because i thought they were going to pass the torch and it was going to be like dan Aykroyd or bill murray or you know, uh, Ernie Hudson or uh, them passing the torch on to right. the next generation of Ghostbusters. Right. And it turned into, it was a reboot. And that irked me. That was my beef with it. Um, I'm not a big Melissa McCarthy fan. I like, I think she's a great person. I just, she's not my funny. Right. Uh I didn't have, and that's there are there are fair criticisms of the 2016 Ghostbusters film. Yes, but there was a lot of hate coming to it from the get go before unnecessary. Monday. Yes, and some of that, you know, you were talking about you know, when we talk about toxic fandom. I mean, it, it's in there. There is a toxic element in all fandoms, or and somebody will always find something to complain about, hmm. and part of that is. And I, and I see this especially in Star Wars, but it applies across the board, okay, is that there are fa- certain fans who believe that they, that they should be serviced ahead of anything else, that it's that whatever they, that whatever comes out, whether it's Star Wars or, or you know, the, even the new Star Trek, or in this case, Ghostbusters, that they expect they have a certain expectation and when that is not met all they do is complain about it now yeah. there is also a certain amount of toxic fanboy who is just flat out misogynist against the 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 female cast in ghostbusters 2016 answer the call okay yeah. that it didn't matter who it was they were going to complain about it and you know there, there was also people that the, all they wanted to see on screen again 
was, you know, Ray, Venkman, Egon, and Winston. Yeah. And they didn't get that. No. And I, I mentioned this to you before, but the reason they didn't get that was because of Bill Murray. Yeah. End of discussion. Bill Murray didn't want to do Ghostbusters 3. They had scripts, they had stories. He decided to walk away from the project and they could never get him to come back. That's what, and when Harold Ramis died in 2014, that killed any kind of reunion. So the people that owned the intellectual property for the intellectual property rights to Ghostbusters, they decided to make answer the call. Yeah. And again, answer, I, the 2016 Ghostbusters movie is funny. Mm-hmm. Now, I also understand that if you don't like that particular you know those particular actors that's fine if that's not your your way that's that's okay you know uh, there are certain actors and comedians out there who i don't particularly care for um you know and that that's my prerogative but too too much you're right i think a lot of people wanted they wanted that the 2016 ghostbusters even if it wasn't a passing the torch moment they wanted it to still exist within the same continuity yeah because they wanted ghostbusters to be a single a single universe and it wasn't another problem i had with it it seemed have you ever seen the movie bridesmaids i've watched parts of it yes okay so it seemed bridesmaids meets ghostbuster okay. is how it came across and it, like it, because uh, uh kristen wig and uh melissa mccarthy were, were both in that um and it, it while i think they have great chemistry as a combo like they they are like to me they are the simon Pegg and nick frost they have a good chemistry Mm -hmm. as comedians right but it just came off as like it's bridesmaid meets ghostbusters and that that was a a thing here that well and i think part of the again that one criticism of the 2016 ghostbusters is the the original ghostbusters was was a mix of science fiction and horror and comedy Mm. And 26, the Ghostbusters answer the call was, was a comedy first. That, yeah, the and, whole wontons, soup sure, and everything. Sure. And, and the, there were some gags that worked and some gags mm. that didn't. But, you know, you were talking about the, Paul Feig is the director of both of those movies. Mm. Okay. And he makes, I think he makes good comedy movies. But that's what that, that movie is a comedy first. And it's, it's that more than it is horror. And it's that more than it is science fiction. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and they tried to do some different things and that doesn't always work. Um, but like I said, I think there is a certain, there was a certain fat percentage of the fandom and a certain uh, faction of people who were going to hate whatever came out. What, I think what, so, yeah. Whatever, whatever came on the screen, they hated it and they were they hated it before the movie hit the before the before the 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 projector rolled but they were still there watching it because all they wanted to do is bitch about it afterwards no and and i absolutely agree and that's that's kind of heartbreaking because i i'm not a bridesmaid fan my wife is she loves that movie she thinks it's great so this if this was you know something that she was excited about and happy for hey awesome cool everybody enjoy your fans truly 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 but it just eh, wasn't for me and it sure, is a shame right. um but then we have which came out this year uh afterlife right. uh, which was actually supposed to come out wasn't it supposed to come out in like 2020 or t- late 2019 originally it was it, it got, was it was supposed to come out during the pandemic yeah well wow. um which is <laughs> i almost want to call it this is this is almost what star wars should have done when they did when they when they came out with episode seven because it is almost that nostalgia of passing the torch to the next generation of ghostbusters and like how star wars was trying to pass the torch to ray and fen and kylo as the next generation of star wars well the so star wars when with the sequel trilogy force awakens was supposed to be that it was supposed to it was it was and this is also the criticism i have of afterlife Mm. okay a lot of people uh, that there was there was so much fan service in force awakens that that the feeling was that jj abrams was trying to bring back the people who didn't like the prequel trilogy and so what he made was basically new hope all over again 
Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. That's pretty much what that was. That, 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 Even it, on a desert planet, Jakku. Starts on a desert planet. There's a giant thing that they have to blow up. They have to, you know, then they have to escape. You know, they have to, to break Ray out of somewhere and blah, 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 blah. And it's, an old man dies. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's almost, it's, it is almost, it's almost Force, it's Force Awakens is almost Star Wars part two or, or, or you know, again, rebooted. Yeah. Okay. And it was supposed to be transitionary. Yes. The problem with that, and I've said this before, the problem with the sequel trilogy is that there was no plan yep. that they didn't have. They didn't go into that knowing where episode eight was going to go and yeah. where episode nine was going to end with that arc. And so what you had when, when last Jedi came out last Jedi objectively, and I know a lot of people disagree with this last Jedi is probably the best movie of the sequel trilogy there. It has problems, but it yeah. is the most, it is the most adventurous. It takes the biggest chances. And a lot of people just didn't like, it. you know, and, and it's, it's the same people who said, oh, Force, Force Awakens is just New Hope all over again. I hate it. Blah, 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 blah. You know, I want to try something different. And then Last Jedi tried something different. And those same people will complain, <laughs> oh, it's too different. You 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 completely wrecked Star Wars. I went different, but I went the same. I went old school, yes. but I went. So, it's yes. yeah, No, it's, it's and, I, I, I agree. I get where you're coming from. No, and, it's, so, and so then so then when J.J. Abrams comes back and makes Rise of Skywalker. He completely undoes Last Jedi and makes a very safe movie because there's no plan. Now, to tie this into to Ghostbusters, Afterlife is a very safe movie. Okay, it is that it's it's that passing the torch movie. Okay, yep. because we gave the spoiler alert, and but this yep. was in all the previews. It was in all the previews. You yeah. knew, you yes. knew, Ray, Venkman, and Winston are showing up again. Okay. Yep. Because that was in one of the trailers. You know, yeah. have you missed us? You, you, hear, you hear Bill Murray's voice. Have you missed us? Yes. So you knew they were going to come back. And so what I hope for Afterlife is that it's a transitionary movie from Ghostbusters 2 or from, yeah, from Ghostbusters 2. Because, you know, uh, the, the director, Jason Reitman, and his father, Ivan Reitman, the director yeah. of the first two movies, and the pre one of the producers of this, says that Ghostbusters 2 still exists. Okay, so it's a, it's that transition to now having Phoebe and Trevor and Lucky and podcast, the four yeah. of them being the new Ghostbusters, and it's supposed to get there, which is fine. And they did a good job. And if and if you have an emotion, any emotional investment in the first Ghostbusters movie, Afterlife is near perfect, right? Absolutely. Everybody, absolutely. All the all of the all of the Ghostbusters groups on my feed and all of my friends who are in the Ghostbusters groups, like I was in tears at the end when the thing happens, right? Yes. Right. The thing, right? The thing. But because of that, because they had to mine that that emotional response of of uh, of uh, the the mother, what's oh what's her name? Uh Carrie who, Kelly. Yes. Okay. Carrie Coon played as, by as, yeah, right, played as Callie, Callie as Callie. Callie played by Carrie Coon. Yes. Uh, Callie, the Egon's daughter. Yeah. Okay. Sh she reconnects with him at the end. And then the the granddaughter, Egon is is shepherding the granddaughter along, Phoebe along. This is one of those movies that the more you think about it, the more problems you have with it. <laughs> the more things just don't make sense. Right. So Phoebe calls Ray. She, she calls the Ghostbusters number that's on the on the commercial. You know, we're yeah. ready to believe you. She calls that number. Ray picks up the phone and then he gives this great little speech and, you know, exposition about how they fell apart and how they fell away. And Egon was starting to go crazy and, you know, do all sorts of, you know, wild stuff. What moving to Oklahoma to chase cultists is a, is a, is a normal thing. <laughs> right. But here, here's my problem with that. Ray, Peter, and Winston were on the roof fighting Gozer. They know for a fact that Gozer exists and is trying to come back into the world. And they think Egon's going crazy because he's going out to find some temple that, that Evo Shandor is building out in the middle of Oklahoma. They think that's nuts. Okay? It's, it's like Seinfeld. 
half of the Seinfeld episodes go away if those people have text messages. That's true. Right? It's true. Half of the sign. <laughs> More than half of all the Seinfeld episodes don't exist if all Elaine has to do is send a text to Jerry, hey, can you pick up some soup on the way back, right? <laughs> soup for everybody. There's no soup, Nazi. Right. No soup. So <laughs> if they, if Egon, if they don't believe that, if they think that Egon has gone off the reser, you know, is off his rocker and is out in the middle of nowhere chasing something, all he has to do is send a picture text of Ivor Shandor's body in a glass casket, number one. And number two, this portal from hell that he has gun shooting it, proton gun shooting into to stop the, you know, Gozer from coming back into this world. You can't tell me that Ray and Peter and Winston wouldn't be there in a heartbeat. Yeah, you're right. You're, and, yeah. And, and then, and then at the end, like Phoebe, she has, she has this look in her, the, the granddaughter has this look in her. Yeah. You didn't tell me my grandfather is Egon Spengler. Okay. Because everybody knows the Ghostbusters exist. Everybody knows that the thing that happened in 1984 in Central Park West, it's all on YouTube. They've watched the videos. Egon Spengler, they know that they say, everybody in the world knows that the Ghostbusters saved the world that day. And she doesn't know who her grandfather is, please. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, but like I said, the more you think about it, the more things just kind of are like, you know, I, I, I put that, it that doesn't same always add up. But if, like I said, if you have an emotional investment in Ghostbusters, it is perfect. It is perfect when they're fighting, when they're <laughs> fighting Gozer at the farm. And, you know, you know, it was happening in, in all the third acts. The bad guys are about to win. The good, you know, Ray and, and Peter and Winston show up. Again, they they get the rear ends handed to them by Gozer, but then the ghost of Egon reappears, the afterlife, yeah. and he saves the day. Again, that is perfect. It was perfect. A, it's yeah, I put it in the same category as like Jurassic Park because like if you the more and more you watch Jurassic Park, the more it makes your brain hurt and yes. like you don't want to like I can't enjoy it. So I just I, I let right. it live in its own little world. <laughs> Especially where that cliff suddenly appears in the T-Rex paddock. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, wait, wait. That wasn't there a second ago. How do you walk over it? And the, uh, yeah. just the, so much, well, like, even from like a dinosaur point of view, like the velociraptors that they're finding and discovering, like the fossil digs are bad. Uh, velociraptor is not actually that big. He's like two yes. feet tall. And yes. it's, it's, it, yeah, the more well, and more you think about, it, the more it makes your brain hurt. Sure. Sure. <laughs> but, but, but you go into it. This is a movie. This is a yes. movie. It's science fiction. There is a certain suspension of disbelief yes. that comes with that. And so, like I said, if if, if, if you, you can have, make me believe for like an hour and a half, this is how things life is supposed to be. I'm oh, in. No. oh, no. So so when I went to see it, I, I went by myself because my wife didn't want to go. And there are, you know, 10 other people in this theater and just just sitting there watching the movie the first time, just without 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 blocking blocking out all of the normal stuff that you would do because i didn't try to stay spoiler free but i also didn't actively go out and seek out spoilers and luckily uh the people on my facebook feed and the people that i know didn't spoil the movie for me although i kind of knew what was going to happen um as i'm sitting there watching it 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 hits all of the right emotional notes if you have an emotional investment in ghostbusters yeah if and and for that for that crowd it's a nine and a half out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 movie. I get that. I, I am one of those people. But then as you're walking out and you're kind of thinking about it, I have some problems. But <laughs> if the purpose of this is to be that transitionary movie, which I believe it is, because they're going to make more. Yeah. They're, oh, yeah. You know, they, it's, it's, they, there was two after credits, right? Was it one or two? There were there were there was a mid credit scene and there was an after credit scene. Okay, so yes, the, the only actor that they did not get back, the only major actor they did not get back from the original series was Rick Moranis, who just basically has fallen off the face of the earth. Well, he, so he he has done very minimal acting since, and mm -hmm. I, unfortunately, it's be, I I had read this a long time ago because they were going to do Spaceballs two, and they, they he didn't because his wife passed away, and he just right. like and that's and I get that. Right. I, I truly, and I have nothing but respect for that guy. Right. And maybe they might be able to pull him in. 
for like a, the whatever Ghostbusters Afterlife Two or whatever they decide to call it. You know, right, right. But 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 they set that up. They they yeah. set that up because th- th- at the end of the movie, before the before the end credit scene, um, they they show Winston in the firehouse. Yeah, somebody drives the Ecto One back to the firehouse, so the the Ecto One has come home. Okay. Um, they they there's the first end credit scene has Dana Barrett in it yeah with with Venkman yep. and the last and the 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 after credit scene has uh Janine Annie Potts, Annie Potts and Winston talking about because apparently Winston got really rich and and he is going to be the one who's funding the Ghostbusters and the, and the final scene in that is it shows the containment unit in the basement with the light blinking yes so so they're going to make more and like i said the the design they do sure they will the the design is that it's going to be phoebe trevor podcast and uh lucky who are going to be are going to be the four recurring you know now they also kind of have a problem because they're like what is it she's like 10 or something she's in middle school oh so she's 12 or 13 yeah Uh, trevor is 16 or 17 so is lucky uh and podcast is also in middle school so if I mean, if they make it in three years, they can age them up and, and they could all be 18 or 19 and move to New York and yeah, and all of that because, you know. Then, or maybe, uh, you know, the older two go, uh, was it Phoebe and Trevor go and, or not Phoebe, uh, Phoebe's the, the little sister, uh, Trevor and what's the other one? Not podcast. Uh, Lucky. Bu- 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 Lucky. Yeah, podcast and Lucky, or not podcast, but uh, Trevor and Lucky go and then like podcast and Phoebe like sneak to new sure. york and the, they'll, they'll they, figure yes. some way they, they can find a way that they, they can find a way to make that happen and um or you know it, go it, their visit for the summer or something sure yeah and then and then uh, you know egon shows them something or, or whatever however they want to do that um but it's a good transitionary movie and it is even though there is a lot of fan service that's the criticism the criticism is that there's it's too fan servicey um I, I can agree with that. My and, and this was one of the things I was going to say. I didn't like the Stay Puffed Marshmallows because the the point of the Stay Puffed Marshmallow Man was it came in the first one because that's Perfect. what you know Vankman was thinking about. Uh, yeah, right. Or, it's it's yeah, a, right, it's, yeah, a, right, it's a form yeah, right. of the yes, chosen form yes. of Gozo the Destructor. Yes. yes. And then all of a sudden, like there's a bunch of mini ones. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it was a funny. It's a funny it's psychic. Funny. But it's also like, oh, come on, uh, that was my one beef. Sure. Well, not right. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I I it did and it's done well. You know, it's over a hundred million dollars at the box office now. Um, yeah. You know, so they've it, it's made enough. I, I'm sure they'll make more. And it's you know, as soon as it hits home video and hits the streaming the streaming platforms, uh, uh, you know, it'll it'll do well there too. Um, but th- that's the the trick for Ghostbusters as a franchise is to do what the Star Wars sequel trilogy did not, and that's advance a coherent story. And I've got to think that as prolific a writer as Dan Aykroyd is, yep. and the and with the technology that exists now that didn't exist back in the late eighties and the early nineties, that they could make two or three or four more Ghostbusters movies at a high at high quality that don't have you know the diminishing returns of sequels um at least that's what i hope i i i absolutely agree with you there um like i said i i thoroughly enjoy the whole ghostbusters series i from i've it's been part of my childhood sure so the nostalgia is there the quality is there and the hopes and dreams of the the sequels is there and yeah, Dan Aykroyd is a phenomenal writer, right. and and if they're keeping everything in the family like they have been, then hey, uh, I I guess my and I, I guess uh, Bill Murray's not doing as much as he used to, so all he can do is kind of nostalgia stuff. So hey, if that keeps him in the game, because what was the last movie he he kind of just does little small I wouldn't even say small things, but like I think the last big movie I saw him in was like Lost in Translation. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. So, um, let me see. What's he did one after that where he was like a, a neighbor, but you know, if he's on board and they're not having any issues and 
hey, I'm I'm all about it. Uh, well, right. I I think though I. I think they the the last scene, the end credit scene, set up Winston as the bridge. Yeah, it, it's setting up Winston Zedmore because in, I saw somewhere on some website they they call him Doctor Winston Zedmore. Um, you know, and in the in the original Ghostbusters, in the first Ghostbusters movie, they establish that uh, Egon, Ray and Venkman all have PhDs in psychology, parapsychology, or something like yeah. that. Um, and so, but, you know, Winston got rich somehow, uh, and he is going to be the, he's going to be, <laughs> he's going to be Charlie for the angels, <laughs> right? He's going to be the guy that has all the money nope. and all the funds. And he's going to, he's going to be able to pay for the firehouse uh, in Manhattan, which as we know, is just ungodly expensive uh, considering where it is. <laughs> Uh, it's hook and ladder eight, by the way, in Manhattan is the actual fire, the actual location of the firehouse. I want to know how much would it cost to have a a firehouse in well, I'm Manhattan. Sure. Get, get, get on the Google. I mean, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to Google that. Um, well. But but that's I, I think that's what they're setting up. And and I. I think if, you know. If they if they play it right, they can have they can have the original Ghostbusters as long as they're alive. Weave in and out of the story, but I hope that they make the story about Phoebe and Trevor and Lucky and Podcast. Because I think that's the way it'll go. I you know, I think they need uh, you know, because when you watch <laughs> I, if you've watched the talk show circuit, uh Ernie Hudson and Dan Aykroyd and Bill Murray, they've, they've gone on all the talk shows. And one of the things they all say is, you know, in 1980, 1982 or 83, when they were filming those movies, the proton packs weighed 40 pounds and they could get up and do all these takes. And now they weigh 25 pounds, which is about what my pack weighs, by the way, they weigh 25 pounds. And there's none of this when you're laying on the ground after getting knocked around, you just stand right up. You know, because all those guys are, you know, they're late 60s, you know, 70s. Uh, there's no, there's, you know, I'm almost 50 and I am not just hopping up with my proton pack to get off the <laughs> ground, you know. <laughs> that just doesn't happen. You know, so, I, <laughs> that's it, yeah. Um, so, but to answer your question or my question answering it, uh, I couldn't find that, but just to give you an idea, a, a, a medium size apartment in New York and um, Manhattan cost you uh, anywhere between 750000 to $950,000. So for an entire building, I'm assuming that's going to be at least five, six million dollars for a small little firehouse building. <laughs> so <laughs> that's, uh, you know what? Hey, I, you don't argue movie logic it's just like you know books right. and games like you right. just you you leave that that piece alone and you don't question it because then you start to destroy your dreams and childhood um okay so i i'm looking yeah. at an article from 2013 okay so this is this is now an eight-year-old article so <laughs> ghostbusters firehouse how much is it worth in okay. the 1984 film the ghostbusters turn run down fire station blah 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 okay so the firehouse in the first movie Egon says is 9,642 square feet. Okay. It is in, it's, you can look, you can get on the Google and look up hook and ladder eight because that's the actual location. Yeah. So in 2013, the average price per square foot was $1,630 in that neighborhood, which in 2013 was $15,700,000. <laughs> so that thing's it. Oh, that's a, it's a, it's a $40 million. It's a $40 million location. Now. <laughs> well, well, now you got to take in for like the, the housing market right now skyrocketed. Sure. So let's, let's make it, let's make it, make it a solid 50 million. Yes. Right. <laughs> right. But, but the other thing you see, you see Winston at the firehouse and then yeah. wherever he is, wherever Winston is, when Annie is talking to him at the end and the end credits se yeah. sequence, he is not poor. <laughs> right yeah <laughs> when winston has done very well for himself so um Ooh, watch so, him be know. the bad guy he's really the bad guy he's he's doing made a deal with like some type of like demonic entity of some sort well i i would hope not but <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, okay, no, so it's let's... a great movie, great series. I I'm excited, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Everything about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, it it hit all the right notes. It for for the nostalgia crowd, it was it was as close to perfect as you can make a movie. Yeah. Um, you know, but like I said, the, the the time will tell what they do with the rest of the franchise. Yeah. And you know, I, I hope they learn something and I hope I hope there is a plan. I would think that there is. Yeah. I would think that there is that that Dan Aykroyd and the, the and Ivan Reitman uh, who are probably will have primary writing credit, I would think that they would have something in mind as to where this is going to go, even if it's only just a general compass direction. Um, but I don't think they'll let it be. They'll just let it sit. I think Sony, there's, or is it Sony or is it Warner Brothers? Whoever uh, owns the rights to it, I think they will be throw enough money at it that they w it won't be, you know, thirty years for another sequel. Columbia Pictures. Columbia. So okay. is is Columbia owned by Warner Brothers, or are they just associate with them, or Sony? They work with Sony a lot, I think. Okay. Right. Um. I don't know. I, I have to to do some more on that one research. Uh, but yeah, no, it's 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 definitely not going to sit. I, I I don't see that sitting anytime soon. Um, yeah, I I think that's a a good spot to wrap this up. Um, David, thank you so much for being on the show and talking Ghostbusters with me. Yeah, um, you are you are actually associated with a uh, a Ghostbusters group. Yeah, uh, a cosplay group. Mm -hmm. or is, is it just considered a cosplay group or is it just a, a charity group both uh, the enthusiasts the, the, the ghostbusters groups are very loosely affiliated um you know they have they they're allowed to operate uh, under the intellectual property provided that you don't do stupid stuff and you know tarnish the name uh the particular chapter that i'm in uh, it's the west virginia division um we we are primarily a, a charity group uh the, the several of the members work with the west virginia children's home society uh which does a, a foster care and places uh, uh children for adoption um and one of the things that we do as a group is uh raise money throughout the year mm. and at the end of the year uh you know all the kids that they have in this foster uh foster care system they they will write out a christmas list um you know the the angel tree or that sort of thing uh and so the the person who coordinates this will bring us the lists that the kids have and the, and the lists are very generic and they don't have names on them what they'll tell us is it's a it's a, a 12 year old girl or an eight year old boy or whatever it is uh whatever the child and it'll have you know things that these kids want for christmas uh and some of the things are, are typical their tablets their bikes um you know that sort of thing you know sp sometimes very specific toys sometimes not uh but then other times the things that these kids want are, are like a pillow because they don't have their own pillow or socks or a blanket or things that just just break your heart oh to think God, that yeah. this is this is what this kid wants for christmas um and so the, a lot of the money that we raise uh, at conventions, we, we, they sell, we sell uh, uh, patches and, and, you know, perlers and, you know, whatever, whatever we think we can, we can sell t-shirts and that sort of thing. Uh, a couple of years ago, the last year before COVID, uh, we raised $15,000. And also the day after Thanksgiving on Black Friday, uh, traditionally the group goes out and goes shopping. And when Toys R Us was still around, we'd go to Toys R Us and we, it, we had people we had Toys R Us staff and even other customers there, like searching through the store for some of the things on these kids' lists. Nice. Um, uh, and and at least before COVID, I don't know about the la last year, this year, but there was not one list that they didn't fill everything on the list. And you know, they even we even went out of state to a couple other uh, uh, similar agencies uh, to see if their kids needed anything too. Um, so that's that's. that's that's what our group does. Uh, I that's, like that. that's the primary. That's emphasis. Always good. Yes, it's 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 a fabulous and um, you know it's it's I th I think it's one of the reasons why a lot of people get into cosplay or why they justify continuing to do whatever the cosplay is. You know, some people do it for the building, some people do it for the fandom, but it's it's going to a hospital or it's it's delivering a bunch of Christmas presents to kids uh, that just makes your day and yeah. and you know it it just makes. It makes putting on the pack or, or lighting up the lightsaber, it makes it all worth it. 
Heck yeah. You know what? I think that is a pristine spot to end this episode on that <laughs> nice, good, feel good yes. moment right there. Before so Christmas. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. As always, please like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you are listening to us on Audible or Apple, please remember to rate and review. We're also on Instagram and Facebook, so please like and follow us at DNA Pod and on Twitter at NerdDNA Pod. And on Twitch at Nerd DNA Podcast. And as always, I'm your host, Steve Pugh, and I'm joined by the good hearted, warm souled, eh, just his heart grew three times bigger, uh, David Perry. Thank you so much, sir, for being on the show and sharing thank these you. amazing moments. Um, thank you and good night.